Are you feeling like you can't easily break down your finances in the way you really need to see them as the business owner? Maybe you've been using tags in QuickBooks Online to segment your data, but you've been frustrated by the fact that they've decided to discontinue the tag functionality. Whether you're trying to track different revenue streams, products, or locations, there is a better way to do it, especially if you are interested in switching accounting softwares and trying out Zero. So some of you know that a few months ago, I decided I wanted to try out Zero. My audience has been asking for QuickBooks alternatives. And so I've been spending quite a bit of time in Zero and actually migrated my books into the software. And as the data loving person that I am, I love to see my data segmented in the way that I need it as the business owner to make decisions. So after getting my books set up in Zero, one of the first things that I did was go try to understand how their tracking categories worked and how I could apply it to my business. And as a spoiler, I have been super happy with the functionality. And the great thing is it comes in every single one of Zero's packages. Even their lowest plan has tracking categories. Now I'm partnering with Zero on this specific content. And that also means I can offer you a special deal. So if you go to jamietroll.com com forward slash zero, you can get signed up with your new zero account and get 90% off for six months right now. Go check out my link below to see what that current deal is, but it is going to be a better deal than you could get on the zero website itself. So please make sure to use my link if you decide to sign up and make sure to stick around until the end of this video where I'm going to give you my one game changing tip when it comes to setting up your tracking categories that could save you hours. Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Troll, your favorite CPA and financial literacy coach. And I love to bring you all the content, all about the tools you need to run your business efficiently and get access to the information you need. So let's talk a little bit more about tracking categories. What are they? They are somewhat similar to how you might use something like class tracking in QuickBooks Online, but class tracking in QuickBooks Online is only available if you're on the plus membership or above. So that means that you don't have access to class tracking if you are on one of their lower subscription levels. But like I said, in zero, this comes in every subscription level. And I think that's really important because being able to segment your data in the way that it's going to be useful to view is absolutely critical to running your business. So there's lots of different ways you can segment this out. And I'm going to show you exactly what I do for my business. But I want you to start thinking about how you would want to see the data ideally in your business. There are probably some natural segments that you could group things in that would be helpful to see. So would you want to see maybe profitability by client or location or product? There's a million different ways to do this. Or perhaps like me, you have various different channels in your business. Maybe you are selling some kind of goods and you are doing that on Amazon, Shopify, and you're doing it in a physical store as well, right? That's a way you could stratify your data into those three different buckets. You could track income and cost separately and really get a better feel for what is most profitable in your business. Same thing with locations, right? If you have multiple locations and you want to track those separately. So that's the great thing about these tracking categories is that it lets you segment your data into a couple of different buckets, right? You don't just have to choose one. You actually get two tracking categories with up to 100 different categories below each of those uh, different divisions. And that is going to allow you to track all kinds of things. So let me jump in. I'm going to show you exactly where to find this. If you're going to get this set up in zero, I do recommend you do this pretty much as soon as you start a zero account and get everything connected and migrated over that you start looking at tracking categories. So how does this work in practice? Well, there are several ways you can use your tracking categories. And one of those is when you're actually sending invoices. So let's say you're sending an invoice for payment and you're sending that to perhaps a client and you want to send a new invoice, then when you're filling this out, you can actually put in a few different lines, right? So let's say we have a few different sales here um, and we can put in descriptions and things like that, but we can actually determine what division and what location these sales relate to. So that makes it such that we can actually track this much easier. So I can determine, okay, it's digital product sales, uh, for, you know, my online sales division, maybe this is something different. Maybe this was, um, an invoice for speaking and, um, that goes to other un unassigned, right? So I can 
make these assessments and add these essentially kind of like tags, but this is gonna allow us to pull the right kinds of reports. So really the reason that we're doing this is not just to assign these uh, different tracking categories, but it's to be able to pull reports that then will show us our income and expenses by these different divisions and locations or however you've decided to use your tracking category. So it helps make our financial reports so much more helpful. So I'll show you that here in just a minute. So now I'm over here to give you another example of how this can work. So I am over on my bank reconciliation page and this is my credit card. So I'm reconciling that and matching these transactions. So in this case, I have a specific amount that I spent that I want to add to my general ledger. And so when I do this, the nice thing is I can put in the information here um, about who it's for. So this is actually to um, somebody who's helping me with editing my book. So this is related to that. So I'm gonna add this as book expenses. I can put a description in here too, um, editing, and then I can assign it a division and a location. So these are right here. Um, and so in this case, I'm gonna put hidden profit book and then location, I can kind of decide what to do here. I'm not using this in my business right now. So this was just for an example. And then I can go ahead and say, okay, and then it's gonna add it to my ledger and it's already going to have assigned those tags to it, which is great. So now I wanna run a report and show you how this can show up and why this is helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and run an income statement. This also works with the balance sheet. So when I'm over here at my profit and loss, I have run it for just um, a small amount of time and I've put in some sample numbers here. But just to give you an idea, normally you're gonna see your profit and loss kind of all together. All your transactions are gonna be grouped together. But the great thing about using tracking categories is now up here, I can actually determine what I wanna show. So maybe I just wanna send you know, one of these. I just wanna run it for one element and then I want to send this to the head of this division, right? So I can run just a PL for digital products. They don't need to see everything else. And I can send this to them to show them how we are performing, right? Or perhaps we wanna see all of them. We wanna kind of see the breakdown and compare our different divisions. We can select all and we can run this to where we can see it by division. So it's gonna lay everything out here. You can see the book expenses that I added is sitting right here. So that expense is in the right place. And now we can look at our PL in a much more useful way, right? These totals are still gonna equal our totals for our full PL, but now we get to see it broken down in a way that actually is useful. And if you've been following me long enough, you know that for me, the organization of your data is often even more important or as important at least as the accuracy, right? We get so worked up about, you know, it being a couple cents off or something like that, but really the key is to be able to look at our data and make important decisions based on it. And when our data is all jumbled together and doesn't really mean much to us, it's not gonna be meaningful for making decisions, but this is. And again, we can stratify it in any number of ways. So this just allows us to use the same data to be able to stratify and see important insights Insights in our business. And you can even do this right over here. There's uh, special accounts that are just saved to compare divisions, compare location, right? It's already here um, in your saved common format uh, for your PL. So it's really, really easy to get to and to be able to make some assessments from. So hopefully that gives you an indication of how easy it is to use these tracking categories in Zero and how functional it is. And y'all, I'm a person who loves some functionality. I drive a Honda Odyssey minivan. <laughs> I am all about the function. Now remember, I promised you that bonus tip and it's actually kind of a bonus two tips. <laughs> and this is going to save you hours when it comes to doing these tracking categories and getting everything set up. So the first thing that I recommend you do is set them up right away. As soon as you migrate into zero, I want you to go ahead and take care of making sure all your banks are connected and things like that. And then the next thing I want you to do before you even start reconciling transactions is to go in and set up these tracking categories. And that way you don't have to go back and try to add things after the fact, right? Then you are doing this from day one. But either way, even if you're starting this kind of midway, you can go ahead and add these to your rules. So that's my 
you know, second part of this tip is to create rules, which are first of all helpful for just assigning expenses to uh, particular accounts, but you can also assign them to particular divisions, locations, however you're using your tracking categories, and you can even split one expense into multiple different categories. How awesome is that? So that's something I'm actively using in my business, and it's so helpful. When we have an expense, but it's not just for one division, maybe it's actually, you know, 50% this division and 50% this division, you can actually split that within zero so that it'll split the expense when you're looking at your P&L on a tracking category basis. How cool. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that real quick. So here's a real life example. I just came in here and I am doing my reconciliation on one of my credit cards. And one of the expenses is for this G Suite. This is for our email that we use across the business. And so in this case, I can enter in the information, I can put the descriptions, and I can go ahead and pick divisions like I showed you before, which is all well and good. However, that is not going to save us time. This is something that I have as a expense every single month in my business. And so I don't wanna have to do this every single time this expense comes up. So in this case, I'm gonna hit options and I'm gonna to go to create bank rule. And I love these rules, y'all. Okay, so in this case, we are going to look at creating this bank rule that's gonna work. Now, I tend to uh, think about what you wanna include here. So this is any conditions match. I'm actually gonna change this a little bit because what this is saying is as long as it says sale, um, it's going to use this bank rule, and I don't wanna do that. I want this just to apply to my uh, G Suite sales, so I'm just gonna get rid of that one, and um, we can either do any or all. Just make sure you're thinking about what could happen when you are doing this. You can also change this to be um, just contains, like, so sometimes if there's a bunch of numbers on the back end of this, I might say contains, because um, regardless of whether the reference number at the end changes, it's still the same expense. So I'm gonna go ahead and do contains because if the description contains this, it's likely going to be for my G Suite email. So then I'm going to come down here and uh, put in a new contact. Um, and this one already is in my system. And then we're going to come down here. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can put in these line items here, but I actually like coming down here, especially if you want to split this out. So I'm going to show you, let's say maybe these this G Suite needs to go across two of my different divisions, right? Then I can come in here and create this rule. And this is just going to be G Suite email rule. Um, I'm going to determine the account that it's going to go to, which for me is office supplies and software, tax rate of zero for this. And then I'm going to come in here and pick the division. So let's say my affiliate partnerships division needs 50% of that. And then I can also pick a store. I'm not going to do that because um, I actually don't want to do that in my books, but um, you might have also a location that you're picking. And in this case, I want to say 50% of that is going to go to that affiliate partnerships. Now, I can add a new line here and say the same thing, right? I'm just gonna put this here, same account. Um, and then I'm gonna come over here and just assign a different division. And I'm gonna put the other 50%. So the key is it needs to add up to 100%. And then each time this rule is satisfied, it's going to automatically assign the account and the divisions and locations. And it's gonna do it based on the percentages that I have noted here. So I don't have to go in and do any kind of crazy allocation. Um, and you can go ahead and figure out what do you want this to set this on, right? Do you want this on just this card? Or if you change cards, oftentimes I'll do all bank accounts because sometimes I change the cards that I am going to be putting this on. So you might wanna do the same thing. And then you just press save. And now when I come back here, it's going to have this rule already applied. So it's going to say apply rule. You can always view details if you want to know more about the rule, but then you can go ahead and just press OK and match it to the rule it has already created. So that's my favorite feature. I love setting up rules because it just makes things so much faster and I don't just get bogged down in all the tasks of assigning accounts and divisions all the time and it does it for me. And then it's making my reports that I am running my PL, my balance sheet, so much more useful to me and to the business. 
So if you're ready to give zero a try, definitely check out my link below, jamietrell.com forward slash zero. And right now for a limited time, we have 90% off for six months. You cannot beat that. You definitely want to sign up right now and get started. And you can go back and go ahead and migrate on over. I have a whole video that you can go check out that walks you through how to migrate to zero in less than an hour. So if you're worried about it being a whole process, I show you exactly how to do it. And I did it myself and it was super easy. So this is a way to be able to start fresh in a new system and get excited about being able to see your numbers on a whole new level by using tracking categories. If you've got questions about Zero, please ask them down below in the comments. I'm happy to help and definitely make sure to like and subscribe and be doing more content on Zero, especially as I am experimenting in it and finding all the new cool stuff it does. So if you're a zero user or you're about to be, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next time.